Now I'm going to the New Testament. And I'm going to match what is in the New Testament with the Final Testament, okay, or the Last Testament. You know, and here Jesus is talking to his disciples. That's his, like his last sermon. He's talking to them about that he's going to go. And of course, you know, the Bible says, it doesn't say that he said that he's going to be crucified, but he said that he's going to go. And I'm going to read one, the, the verses one by one. That's actually in John 16, one of the Gospels. It says, from stumbling, they will make you outcasts. That's what Jesus say, is, is saying to the, gospel, to the disciples, to the Hawariyin. From synagogue, but an hour is come for everyone who kills you, they will think that he is offering a service. So he's saying that you guys are going to be persecuted after I'm, I'm going, and people are going to think that if they kill you, that means they're doing something good, OK? Guess what? The Prophet Sallallahu said the same thing to his, brother, to his companions. And he said, there's going to be a time where it's going, to be, they're go, it's going to be really hard for the Muslims. And it's talking about the end of the days. It says, Allah's messengers, peace and blessings be upon him, said, imminently there will come a time when the nations gather against you just as people gather around a feast. A man said, will it be because we are few at that time, O Allah, O Allah's Messenger? He responded, no, you will be numerous. You will be a lot of people in those times. But you will be as useless as the scum of the sea. And Allah will remove the fear that your enemies used to possess from you, uh, from their chests. So he's talking about the end of the days. And Jesus also prophesied about the end of the days, about the persecution of the believers. Then he says in the next verse, in John 16, 5, he says, but now I am going. He did not say I am going to be crucified. You know, subhanAllah. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ You know, rather Allah raised him up. He did not say that he was crucified. And here Jesus is saying, he never actually prophesied that he's going to be killed. Never. He never prophesied that he will be uh, de he will die, you know, and there are some, of course, differences by the scholars whether he actually died or not. But we know that the Quran said that he was raised up and he said, I'm going to be going. OK, and he said that because I said I'm going, you're going to be sad, you know, but there are good news. What he say, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go, the helper, the comforter, al-mu'azzi, will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Now, let's talk about this comforter. First of all, it says that he gives comfort, okay? Well, in the Quran, it says about Prophet Muhammad he, that he gives also comfort to the people. It says in Surah Muhammad, in his, in his surah, Wasallam, with his name, it says, and those who believe and do righteous deeds and believe in what has been sent down upon Muhammad, and it is the truth from their Lord, he will remove from, the, the, uh, from them their misdeeds and amend their conditions. Not only just like to fix their condition and make it better, but it could be also psychologically that it comforts them, okay? Also, it says here in the same verse, it says, but I tell you, the helper, you know, it says uh, uh, um, about Ismuhu Ahmed. Also, it could be here that it was mis mistranslated to, it's supposed to be the praised instead of the comforter. And how did I know that? There is the word over here, parakletos. And parakletos is the Latin word or the, the Greek, sorry, the Greek word for al-Mahmud or Ahmad. And Mahmud, it means the praised one. So here it's talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, now let's go more about what he says. He says, and, and now he's, he's talking, he's explaining about him more. And he says, and he, when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. First, he will convict, okay? What convict means, is he's gonna tell people that you are doing something wrong and you need to fix it. You are doing something good and alhamdulillah, you're gonna get azure for it or you're gonna get reward for it, okay? 
That's actually what it says in the Quran. Look at this. It says in Surah Al-A'raf, those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the gospel, who enjoins upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong. يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ SubhanAllah. And then he says, but when he, the spirit of the truth, that's what Jesus say in the next verse. He say, this, he calls him the spirit of the truth. Who was called at the time of Jahiliyyah as sadiq al-Amin? The most trustworthy, the most believing person. Who was? It was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He used to be called the most truthful, the most, the most trustworthy as sadiq al-Amin. And here Jesus is saying that this person who's going to come after me, he will be the spirit of the truth. Why? Because he will guide you into the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Muhammad, again, it is the truth from their Lord. He will remove from them their misdeeds and amend their conditions. SubhanAllah. The next verse, it says, and I'm going to use again the same verse, it says, for he will not speak on his own initiative. Now here's the thing, Jesus, the, when you talk to Christians about that, they're gonna tell you, oh, this is the spirit of the truth, that's the Holy Ghost. And he is the third person of the three people, the three persons of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, if he's God, then he should be speaking from his own self, right? Now look at the verse, what it says over here in the red. It says, for he will not speak, speak on his own initiative. He will not speak from himself, okay? But whatever he hears, whatever he hears, he hears from whom? From his God, the Father, okay? He will speak. So there is some kind of contradiction of what the Christian says over here. There is no way that this is going to be the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit should act by himself, okay, as God. He shouldn't be listening to anybody, okay? It's Allah, right? If, he, if that's what they say, right? Astaghfirullahaladzim. But here, the, the Bible says, or the Injil says over here, Yohanna, John, it says that he will not speak from himself. That someone else is going to dictate him what to do, okay? And this is what it says in the Quran. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى in huwa illa wahyu yuha. And that it means in Arab, in English, nor does Muhammad speak from his own, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will never speak from his own inclination. It is not but a revelation revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever he says, it is revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And that's exactly matches what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And then it says, he will tell you about things that it will happen in the future. It will happen what it's gonna come. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَآتِيَ He's talking about the Day of Judgment. How many ayahs do we have about the Day of Judgment in the Quran? So many, right? How many hadiths do we have talking about the Day of Judgment? About Juj and Majuj, the coming of Jesus السلام, the coming of the Mahdi, the coming of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, about the, the, the signs of the, of the small hour and the big hour, or the Sa'at Surah, and so on. So many. And who's going to be talking about this? The Holy Ghost? We have never heard anything about the Holy Ghost, subhanAllah. But we know that the Holy Spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, he only speaks to the prophets from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And so that's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, 